and you pass by the cupboard door. If you say so. I've no idea where your skis are. You were actually in that cupboard earlier today. Yes, I was. At the time Mrs. Boyle was killed. At the time Mrs. Boyle was killed, I'd gone down to the cellar. Did you see them when you passed by? I don't believe that, yeah. Didn't you see them there? Can't remember. You must remember if the skis were there then. They're a good shot me, young fellow. I wasn't thinking about any damn skis. I was interested in the cellars. Architecture of this place is very interesting. I opened the door and I went down. So I couldn't tell you whether the skis were there or not. You realize that you yourself had an excellent opportunity of taking them. Yes, yes, I grant you that. If I wanted to, that is. Question is, where are they now? Ought to be able to find them then. Not a case of hunt the thimble. Supposing we are set to? Fucking great thing, skis. Not quite so fast, Major Metcalf. That may be, you know, what we are meant to do. I don't get you. I'm in the position now where I've put myself in the place of a crazy, cunning brain. I have to stay just one step ahead of one step ahead of him. Because if I don't, it may be another death. You still don't believe that. Yes, I do, Miss Kato. <coughs> Three blind mice. Two mice cancelled out. One mouse still to be dealt with. There are six of you here listening to me. One of you's a killer. One of you's a killer! Oh, I don't know which yet, but I shall. And another of you is the killer's prospective victim. That's who I'm talking to right now! Mrs. Boyle held out on me. Mrs. Boyle is dead! You, whoever you are, are holding out on me! Well, don't. You're putting yourself in serious danger. Nobody who's killed twice is going to hesitate to kill a third time, and as it is, I don't know which one of you it is that needs protection. Oh, come on now! Anyone who has anything, however sly, related to this bygone business had better come out with it. All right, you won't. I'll get that killer. I have no doubt of that. But it may be too late for one of you. But let me tell you this. That killer is enjoying himself. He's enjoying himself a good deal. All right, you can go. Talking of chicken, dear lady, have you ever tried chicken's livers that is served on toast that is thickly smeared with foie gras, with a dinner shell baking, and a sous-sorn of fresh mustard? I shall come with you to the kitchen, and we will see what we can concoct. Do get it. What a charming occupation. I am helping my wife, Parvencini. Your husband is afraid for you. Quite natural under these circumstances. It is my sadistic tendency to fear it. Not my dishonorable ones. Alas, what an inconvenience the husband always is. Arrivederla. I'm sure Giles doesn't think of it. No, no. He is very wise. Take no chances. Can I prove to you or to him or to a dogged sergeant that I am not a homicidal maniac? Oh, and suppose that I am really. Don't. But such a gay little tune, is not? She cut out their tails with the carving knife. Stick, stick, stick. <laughs> Delicious. Just what a child would adore. <coughs> Cruel little things. Children. Some of them never grow up. Stop frightening my wife at once. Silly of me. But you see, I found her. Her face was all purple. I can't forget. It is difficult. To forget things. You are not the forgetting kind. I see the kitchen is finished. Potatoes are all going to pieces. Please, Giles. <laughs> Just what did you say to that lady to upset her? Oh, me, Sergeant? Just a little innocent fun. I've always been fun of just a little joke. <laughs> there's nice fun. And then there's fun that's not so nice. I do wonder what you mean by that, Sergeant. I've been doing a little wondering about you, sir. Indeed? 
I've been wondering about that car of yours and how it happened to overturn in a snowdrift. So conveniently. Inconveniently, you mean, don't you, Sergeant? It rather depends on the way you look at it. Just where were you bound for last night when you had this accident? I was on my way to see a friend. In this neighborhood? Not so very far from here. And what was the name and address of this friend? No, really, Sergeant Doctor. Does that matter now? I mean, it has nothing to do with this predicament, has it? We police always like the fullest information. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did you say that friend's name was? I didn't say. That's right. You didn't say. It seems like you're not going to say. But there could be so many reasons. In a more discretion, he's jealous of Rather old to be running around with the ladies at your time of life, aren't you, sir? My dear Sergeant, I'm not perhaps quite as old as I look. That's just what I was thinking. What? That you may not be as old as you try to look. A lot of people go around trying to look older, younger than their years. If one goes around trying to look older, well, it does make one ask oneself why. Having asked questions of so many people, you ask questions of yourself as well. Isn't that overdoing things? I might get an answer for myself. I don't get many from you. <laughs> well, try again. That is if you have any more questions to ask. One or two. Just where are you about, uh, coming from last night? That is simple. From London. What address in London? I always stay at the Ritz Hotel. Well, very nice, too, I'm sure. What is your permanent address? I dislike permanency. What is your business or profession? I play the markets. Stockbroker? No, no. You misunderstand me. Enjoying this little game, aren't you, sir? <laughs> Very sure of yourself, too. But I wouldn't be too sure. You're involved in a murder case. Murder isn't just fun in games. Not even this murder? Ah, dear me, Sergeant Doctor. You are very serious. I have always thought the police to have no sense of humor. Is this inquisition over for the moment? For the moment? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I shall go and look for your keys in the drawing room. Perhaps someone has seen them in the grand piano. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, please. Are you speaking to me? Yes. Perhaps you'd like to come and sit down. What do you want? <clears throat> you may have heard some of the questions I was asking Mr. Potomachini. I heard them. Well, I'd like to get a little information from you. What do you want to know? Full name, please. Leslie, Margaret, Catherine Casewell. Catherine. I spell mine with a K. Quite so. Address? Via Metaposa, Pine Door, Mallorca. Oh, that's in Italy. It's an island. A Spanish island. What is your address in England? Care of Morgan's Bank, Leadenhall Street. No other English address? No. How long have you been staying in England? A week. And you've been staying where? At Ledbury Hotel, Knightsbridge. And what brought you to Monksville Manor, this case, sir? I wanted somewhere quiet in the country. And. How long did you, or do you, propose to stay here? Until I finished what I came here to do. And what was that? And what was that? Eh? What was it that you came here to do, Miss Casewell? I beg your pardon, I was thinking of something else. You still haven't answered my question. I really don't see, you know, why I should. It's a matter that concerns me alone, a strictly private affair. All the same, Miss Casewell. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll argue about it. Would you mind telling me your age? Not in the least. It's on my passport. I'm 24. 24? You were thinking I was older. That's quite true. Is there anyone in this country who can vouch for you? My bank will reassure you as to my financial position. I can also refer you to a solicitor, a very discreet man. I'm not in a position to offer you a social reference. I have lived most of my life abroad. In Mallorca? In Mallorca and other places. Were you born abroad? No. I left England when I was 13. You know, Miss Casewell, I can't quite seem to make you out. Does it matter? I don't know. Just what are you doing here? It seems to worry you. It does worry me. You went to Broadway, you were 13? 12, 13, thereabouts. And was your name Casewell then? 
What's my name now? What was your name then? Come on, tell me. What are you trying to prove? I want to know what your name was when you left England. It's a long time ago, I've forgotten. There are things one doesn't forget. Possibly. Unhappiness? Despair? I dare say! What's your real name? I told you! Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell! Catherine! What the hell are you doing here? I am... Uh... Oh God! I wish to God I'd never come here! No, it's not the policeman allowed to give people the third degree. I was merely interrogating Miss Casewell. You seem to upset her. What did he do? No, no. It's nothing. It's just all this murder, it's so horrible. It came over me suddenly. I'll go up to my room now. It's impossible. I don't believe it. What don't you believe? Six impossible things before breakfast, just like the Red Queen? Oh, yes, it's rather something like that. You me. You look as though you'd seen a ghost. Well, I've seen something I ought to have seen before. Blind as a bat I've been, but I think now we may be able to get somewhere. The police have a clue? Yes, Mr. Wren, the police finally have a clue. I'd like everyone assembled in here again. Do you know where they are? Charles and Molly are in the kitchen. Look, I've been helping Major Bat have to look for your skis. You've looked in the most entertaining places, but all to do a meal. I don't know where Pa the cheese. Is. Oh, I'll get him. You get the others. <laughs> Mr. Potabancini! Mr. Potabancini! Potabancini! Yes, Sergeant. Oh, what can I do for you? Has little Bob policeman lost his keys and doesn't know where to find them? Well, leave them alone, and they'll come home dragging a murderer behind them. <laughs> what is all this? <laughs> Sit down, Major Metcalf. Mrs. Ralston, please. Uh, must I come now? It's very inconvenient. There are more important things than meals, Mrs. Ralston. For instance, Mrs. Boyle won't want another meal. That's a very tactless way of putting things, Sergeant. I'm sorry, but I want cooperation, and I intend to get it. Mr. Ralston, will you please go upstairs and ask Miss Casewell to come down again? Tell her it'll only be a minute. She went up to her room. Have your skis been found, Sergeant? No, Mrs. Ralston, but I have a shrewd suspicion of who took them and of why they were taken. I won't say any more at the moment. No, please don't. I always think that explanations shall be saved till the very end. That exciting last chapter. You know, this isn't a game, sir, isn't it? Now there I think you're wrong. I think this is a game. <laughs> For somebody, you think the murderer is enjoying himself? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what is happening? Sit down, Miss Casewell. Mrs. Ralston, please. Will you all pay attention, please? You may remember that after the murder of Mrs. Boyle, I took statements from you all. Those statements were as follows. Mrs. Ralston in the kitchen. Mr. Ralston upstairs. Mr. Wren ditto. Miss Casewell in the library. Mr. Potamacini in the drawing room playing the piano. Major Metcalf in the cellars. Correct. Those were the statements you gave me. I had no means of checking them. They may be true. They may not. To put it quite clearly, five of you are telling the truth, and one of you is lying. I have a plan that may help us to catch that lie. But if I find out who is lying to me, well, then I know who the murderer is. Not necessarily. Someone may have lied for some other reason. I rather doubt that. But what's the idea? You've just said you have no means of checking these statements. Yes, but supposing we were to go through them a second time. Ah, that old chestnut! Reconstruction of the crime! That's a foreign idea. Not a reconstruction of the crime, per se, but a reconstruction of the actions of supposedly innocent persons. What do you expect to learn from this? If you'll forgive me, I won't say it at this moment. You want a repeat performance? Yes, Mr. Ralston, I do. It's a trap. What do you mean, it's a trap? It's a trap, I know it is. I merely want people to perform the same actions as they did before. I don't see. I simply can't see. What do you possibly hope to find out by just making people do the things they did before? I think it's just nonsense. So do you, Mr. Ray? 
Well, anyway, you can count me out. I'm far too busy in the kitchen. I can't count anybody out. One might believe you're all guilty by the looks of you. Why are you all so unwilling? Of course, what you say goes, Sergeant. We'll all cooperate. Eh, Molly? Very well. Ren? Miss K-12? Yes. Potavincini? Ah, oh, yes. I can say it. Metcalf? Yes. Are we all to do exactly what we did before? The same actions will be performed, yes. Then I will return to the drawing room, to the piano, where with one finger I will pluck out the signature tune of a murderer. <laughs> dum, 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 Not dum. quite so fast, Mr. Potamancini. Mrs. Ralston, do you play the piano? Yes, I do. And do you know the tune of Three Blind Mice? We all know it. Then you could pluck it out with one finger, just as Mr. Potamancini did. Good. Go in there and wait for my signal. But, Sergeant, I thought that we were to repeat our former roles. The same actions will be performed, yes, but not necessarily by the same people. Thank you, Mrs. Rolston. <laughs> I don't see the point. There is a point. It's a means of checking up on the original statements and maybe one statement in particular. Now, if you will all pay attention, I will assign you all your new stations. Mr. Red, will you please go into the kitchen and watch Mrs. Ralston's dinner for her? You're rather fond of cooking, I believe. Mr. Ralston, uh, Major Metcalf, will you please go upstairs to Mr. Ralston's room and examine this hurt for a while? Mr. Potavicini, will you please go up to Mr. Wren's room and find the back stairs is the most convenient way? Miss Casewell, will you please go down to the cells? Unfortunately, I need someone to reproduce my own actions and. I'm sorry to ask it of you, Mr. Ralston, but will you please go outside and trace the telephone wire around to the front door? Rather a chilly job, but you're probably the toughest person here. And what are you going to do? I will be enacting the part of Mrs. Boyle. Taking a bit of a risk, aren't you? You will all go to your stations and wait for my signal. Power letter games! <laughs> <laughs> no objection to my wearing a coat? Oh, I should advise it, sir. Take my torch, too. It's behind the curtain. Mrs. Ralston, count to 20 and then begin to play. Mrs. Ralston? I? Yes. You've been extraordinarily foolish by holding out on me. You've run a very good chance of being killed, and you've put yourself in serious danger more than once. I don't understand. Come now, Mrs. Ralston. We police aren't quite so dumb as you think. All along, I knew you had prior knowledge to the Longridge Farm affair. You knew Mrs. Boyle was the magistrate assigned to the case. In fact, you knew all about it. Why didn't you say anything? I wanted to forget. Your maiden name was Waring? Yes. Miss Waring, you taught school at the school where those children went? Yes. It's true, isn't it, that Jimmy, the child who died, managed to get a letter posted to you. That letter begged for help. Help from his kind, young teacher. You never answered that letter. I couldn't. I never got it. You just didn't bother. It's not true. I was ill. I went down with pneumonia that very day. The letter was put aside with the others. 
It was just weeks after that I found it with a lot of other letters. But then that poor child was dead. Waiting for me to do something. But gradually losing hope. God, it's haunted me ever since. If only I had known. If only I hadn't been ill. It's monstrous that such things should happen. Oh, yes. It's monstrous. Oh, I thought police didn't carry revolvers. The police don't. I'm not a policeman, Mrs. Ralston. <laughs> you thought I was a policeman because I rang up from a call box and said that Sergeant Sergeant was on his way. I cut the telephone wire just before I came in the front door. You know who I am, Mrs. Ralston? I'm Georgie. I'm Jimmy's brother, Georgie. You best not scream, Mrs. Ralston, because if you do, I will fire this revolver. I'd like to talk to you a little. I say, I'd like to talk to you a little. Jimmy died. That nasty, cruel woman killed him. They put her in prison. Prison wasn't enough for her. I said I'd kill her one day. Did too in the fog. It was great fun. Oh, I killed them all when I've grown up. That's what I told Jimmy. Because grown ups can do anything they like. I'm going to kill you in a minute. You better not. You'll never get safely away. Oh, someone's hit my skis. I can't find them. But it's no matter. I don't mind if I get away or not. I'm tired. It's all been such fun watching you all. Pretending to be a policeman. That revolver will make a lot of noise. It will, rather. Best to do it the usual way and grab you by the neck. The last little mouse in the trap. Ah! Georgie! Georgie? You know me, don't you? Don't you remember the farm, Georgie? The animals? That fat old pig. And the day the bull chased us across the field. And the dogs? Dogs? Yes. Spot and play.